networking workshop, we have Oscar Garcia here, who is a Berkeley alum. He was a Chicano Studies major when he came here, and now he owns his own business. Um, it's called Aspira. It's like a career counseling uh, consulting business, which is very similar to what we kind of do here at the Career Center. So let's give him a big round of applause. And All right. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Yes, Thank sir. you. Hi, everyone. Go Bears, right? Woo! Yeah. You know what? Um, Obviously, I'm going to be talking about uh, networking, okay? Some tips that uh, you're actually going to be able to use some of these tips a little bit later because there's going to be a networking session, so stick around for that. But uh, before I get into it, I want to share uh, just a little quick little personal story. So I was a Chicano Studies major, and um, I remember walking into Poly Ballroom in the spring, and at the time, the economy was not that good. And my good friend and I, Will Rivera, he was a political science major. Both of us were in Poly Ballroom, walk in there, you right, and we're looking uh, at all the different uh, companies that are looking to hire. First of all, there weren't that many because, like I said, the economy wasn't that great. But those that were hiring, most of them were looking for engineers. They weren't looking for a Chicano Studies major. They weren't looking for a poli sci major, right? And those that were, were like companies that were hiring salespeople to sell like life insurance. I was like, what? What the heck? Like nothing against that if you do any of that, okay? Or your parents or whoever. That just wasn't what I was interested. So both Will and I, we walk out of poli ballroom, we're over there at the fount, right? And it's a beautiful day like it is today. And we just kind of sit there, you know, at the edge of the fountain. And then all of a sudden, like for me, the light bulb went on. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm a senior. I'm about to graduate, like a couple of you in here. But last semester, I got this thing figured out. I know when to show up to class. I know when to write that midterm, that final. Shoot, I'm going to, you know, I can take some old papers, redo them, and submit them as a new paper, right? Like, right, you get this shit figured out. And all of a sudden, you graduate. You've got to move on to a new stage in your life, and you basically have to be a freshman again, right? So. Some of you that might be dreading, you know, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, really? Like, you're going to look back and this is going to be some fun time, okay? <laughs> All right. Folks, I'm going to come to you with the tips from an introvert perspective. That's my natural personality. I know many of you don't believe that because we have this perception that anyone that does public speaking is an extrovert. That's not true. Those of you that are, that are introverts can relate to this in that doing something like this drains me. And I'm going to be drained today, especially because I'm actually coming back. This morning, I was at Travis Air Force Base doing a LinkedIn 101 for reservists. So, yeah, tonight I'm going to be like pooped, all right? Because right, it takes a lot of energy. But also, I realized too that as an introvert, um, <coughs> introverts, we tend to be some of the best at building those relationships because we tend to listen more than we talk. The stereotypical extrovert, blah, 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 they forget that God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> okay? All right. Oh! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> We're in a secure place, you guys, obviously, okay? Yeah, all right, thank you. Okay, folks, what is networking? Networking is being a friend. That's how I want you to think of networking. We overcomplicate it. We think like we have to be a certain way, we have to say a certain thing to someone. Like, you know, later this afternoon, like, oh my gosh, you know, like, what do I say to this person? Like, quit trying to think of what you, to say to the person. What do you say to someone if you want to be their friend? What do you say to a complete stranger? If I want to be Nasina's friend, hi, I'm Oscar Garcia. Hi. Right? That's where you start. Hi, I'm Oscar. Some of us are so smart that we're actually dumb when it comes to people skills. <laughs> Keep it simple, folks. Now, here's the other thing, too. When we come across as being a friend, that means we are be, you have to be genuine. I'm not here to be her friend because I'm trying to use her because she maybe has a contact. No, that's not being a friend. Be sincere. It can also happen that I reach out my hand to her and maybe she doesn't respond. Yeah, for introverts, that hurts because we, it, again, it took a lot of energy, like, ah, go up to a stranger. But you know what? 
Get over it. Because not everyone's going to want to be your friend. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, okay? I do, I've helped over 10,000 people. Those of you that are into statistics, 80-20 rule, 8,000 of them probably hate my guts. <laughs> so what? Only 20% of you are going to relate to me. The rest of you are going to be like, ah, that guy can take a flying leap. Hey, I don't care. Because I'm not here to try to convince you to do something. All I can do is extend my hand, try to be your friend, and if you don't want to be my friend, don't be my friend. You, get, you see where I'm going, folks, with networking? Okay? Next. Let's talk about some first impressions. Super critical. Okay? <coughs> here it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Five things as it relates to, your, to first impressions. Number one, our demeanor. What does that mean? How we come across, right? Whether you're smiling, you're not smiling, okay? Walking around like this, right? Like, we all, listen, folks, we all form first impressions of people. We all do. You guys are looking at me, I'm looking at you, and you're judging me. I like this guy, I don't like this guy, whatever. Maybe you're making fun of my name, calling me Oscar Mayer Wiener, whatever. But you know what? I'm doing the exact same thing about you. Some of you, if I was hiring, within the first five seconds of seeing you walk in and sit down, I'd be like, next. Seriously. I used to run the local chamber of commerce. Get, you know, people coming in to interview position, and that's exactly, I walk out, you know, greet them, sit down, and I'm looking at them, and they sit down, and all right, auto automatically in my mind, I'm like, this person seems like they have a bad attitude. And maybe you don't have a bad attitude, but how, how are we supposed to judge if that's right now our interaction? So your demeanor. When you go out there, listen, you, we're in a safe environment here because we're all trying to help. That's why we come to the Career Center. But I'm going to tell you something, okay? When you go out the door or you network to, uh, in a little bit, if you're going through crap, keep it to yourself right now. Follow me? Because I don't know you. You, you start dumping on me, we're not going to think. You're a crappy person. Okay? Number two, show genuine interest. Quit trying to have this squirrel attitude, right? You're talking to Nasina, and all of a sudden my eyes are like over here because I'm, oh my gosh, I really want to talk to that person. And like, how, do, how is she going to feel? Like, Oscar, like, I'm right here. Like, am I not important? Be genuinely interested. Number three, compliment people. I don't know, somehow we have this attitude that we have to be funny, the class clown, right? And like always come up with some like a joke. I'm gonna listen, I have fun. My hangover sometimes don't end until Sunday at 3 p.m., okay? Because I have fun the night before. All right? But you know what I, I love to do? I always love to compliment people. Two sharp folks here, when I met, I'm like, damn, wow. Compliment people. I'm going to get into a little bit here, but your why and your story. Your why is, why do you do what you do? And in this case, I'm talking about the why, what's in it for the company. See, my personal why, and many of us, have, that's how we lead. My personal why and why I'm here, because I'm not getting paid to be here, okay? It's because I love helping other people dream bigger, I love inspiring them, and I love serving them, helping them. That's my personal why. But we're all naturally selfish, and you don't give a rip about that. So therefore, my why, what's in it for you, is I empower you, so opportunities come to you. See, now I got your attention. And that's how you need to think. When you go network, you have to understand who is this person, what do they want, or the company, what can I say that is going to catch their interest and be like, wow, you're different. The other part, too, is you need to learn, and I don't have time, I do a whole different workshop on this, on helping people tell their career story. See, many of you are thinking like, dude, career? I just barely graduated from high school four years ago, three years ago. Like, what are you talking about? Really? Did you not have to write a personal statement to get to Cal? <laughs> yeah. Some of you are applying to grad school. Did you not have to write some kind of a statement on why you want to do? And even if you didn't have to do that, every single one of us in here has some kind of story. The challenge is knowing how to take some of those bits and pieces of that story and adjust it 
according to who you're going to meet. We all have a story, folks. Learn how to tell that story. And then lastly, I'm going to help you out with a concept that's going to help you turn a stranger into a casual acquaintance called FORM. It stands for Family, Occupation, Recreation, Message. Okay? All right. Your why statement. So, <coughs> as I told you, this is, my <coughs> this is my why. I empower you so opportunities come to you. About two years ago, I was at an event, standing in a room only, listening to a speaker, right? And I kind of felt someone's present behind me. And I turn around, and it was the Dean of Workforce Development for one of the community colleges. I live in Mountain View, so um, out in the, in the South Bay area. We hadn't seen each other in, I don't know, seven, eight months. And he asked me, of course, that question. Hey, Oscar, great to see you. So what are you up to today, nowadays? And because he worked with students, and I told you how you need to know who your audience is and kind of adjust your story, your message, I said, I empower students so opportunities come to them. What? How do you do that, Oscar? And see, immediately, I knew, like, I got him. And I don't mean like a salesperson, like I close a deal, okay? I mean, I got, piqued his interest. Within five minutes of parting ways, because obviously we had to get back to listen to the speaker, he gets on his cell phone, emails his executive assistant, and says to her, can you please schedule a meeting with Oscar? Because I want to uh, talk to him about some opportunities with us. See, as an introvert, don't you want opportunities to come to you? I think all of us do. Interviewing sucks. Writing a resume sucks. Cover letter sucks. Okay? But you see my story too? What if I would have said, if he, if he asked you, Oscar, so what do you do? Oh, I started my own business. Oh, that's nice. That's probably what he would have said. See, most of you, hey, so what do you do? And you lead with your major. And this is what most of you are going to do after you graduate five years from now or whenever and you're out in the workforce, oh, what do you do? I'm a software developer. I'm a lawyer. Boring. You don't capture anyone's attention like that. Figure out your why statement. In fact, write this down, you guys, okay? Because I know most of you guys are lazy. You're not going to do this, okay? Go on to YouTube. You don't even have to watch it. Just listen to it. Look up Simon Sinek's TEDx talk, talk called Golden Circle. Golden Circle. Simon Sinek. You, you seen it? Yeah. That's where this has come from, you guys, okay? All right. I'm going to walk you through kind of practical scenario here, okay, on networking. There's many different ways, but I've chosen to do, give you something practical, especially given the event that's going to happen shortly, you know, in a little less than an hour, all right? <clears throat> so I'm going to walk you through what you do before, during an event, and then post-event, because this is what I want you to do. Well, you can't do the pre-event now, okay, but next time, all right? Here's some things. First off, when you go to an event, I don't care if it's networking or, you know, whatever. You're going to go some event where other people are going to be there you don't know. Have a plan. You just don't show up like, hey, I'm here, okay? What's your plan? You know, is your goal because you need to meet certain people or you want to identify a certain company or, you know, whatever. Have a plan. Number two, ask the host for the attendee list. Now, they might not give it to you, but if you don't ask, you know what the answer is going to be? No. Now, they might be concerned and thinking that you're asking also for the email. No, 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 no. Just tell them, say, you know, all I need to know, if it's possible, give me the names and the companies, if you know, of who's going to be there. Why? Because once you have that list, what I want you to do is scan it because maybe there's Joe, there's Mary, there's Oscar that work at ABC company that you're trying to get your foot in the door. So now when you go to, at the event and you ask, go up to the host and they say, hey, Nasina, you know what? I noticed, you know, Oscar, Mary, Joe, what, do you think you could introduce me uh, to them? And see, you save yourself some time. Also, from, from an introvert standpoint, a warm introduction is a lot easier for us versus I'm over here talking to Jesse, right? Like, dude's wasting my time because, like, I'm not even in the field that he's in. I should be talking to her, but I never get to her because I'm over here. Okay? Next. Folks, come on, okay? All of us are on social media. I know some of you are on TikTok now. Okay? Listen, I told you, I love having fun, okay? And keep having fun with social media. But let's start using it as a business tool as well. What do I mean? Go on to social media, not just LinkedIn, which LinkedIn is a great tool, 
but start going onto social media, looking up people on Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok, obviously LinkedIn, and see information about them, okay? Go look at it, why? Because once you get the 411 on those people, you go up, like for example, if you were to look at my LinkedIn profile, you see that I'm a first gen. You see where I went to school, you see what my major is. So therefore, same thing, networking is about being a friend and establishing that common ground, okay? I already told you about your why. Make sure you also you plan some icebreakers, okay? What are some of the things that you might say to someone, okay? Plan them, exercise, work it, all right? And then lastly, that whole practice, practice, practice. Folks, networking is not a one-time thing. It's not like taking a, 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 an elective, you know, pass, no pass, and you're done with it. I remember taking astronomy. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. I forgot 99.9%. <laughs> I just took it for the pass, no pass. That's it. Networking is, doesn't work this way. You got to keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Because if you don't practice, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to suck at it. You're going to be 50 years old. I'll be 51 next month. Be, you're going to be grouchy. Okay, now let's talk about being at, a, at the event. What do we do? So, right, like this afternoon. Here we go. So, this is what I like to do and I encourage you. <coughs> I walk into an event, say like this, this right, walk in. I'm not the type, because again, this is not my style. I just kind of go in, I'm like, hey, what's up, right? No, I just like kind of just chill, you know, kind of in the corner. I'm scanning the room. I'm seeing who's sitting where, you know. Maybe they look like they're together, like a group over here. Oh, this person looks like he's by himself. Like Jesse, like seriously, like for me, again, first impressions. I look at, over here at Jesse. To me, Jesse looks like he came here alone. Why is that important? Because as an introvert, maybe I can go up to Jesse and I feel more comfortable. Hey, I'm Oscar Garcia. Versus trying to, a group over here, like, oh, these guys look kind of like a groupie over here. Like, uh, I don't know. Okay. I told you about asking for introductions. Even if you don't have that list or whatever, ask someone at the host, or maybe there's someone in the room, the event that you already know. Maybe, hey, Miss Messina, or you know, or Jesse, hey, buddy, do you know anyone here? You know, maybe they can help you with some introductions. I told you that listening, static listening. Find some common ground, like I mentioned. And then the other thing, too, folks, is as you are engaging someone. <coughs> Don't be afraid to share some a little bit kind of personal stories. Why? One of the things that I found is when we start sharing some personal stories with someone, like first gen or whatever, all of a sudden people tend to open up and they start sharing some personal stories. Like they feel a little more comfortable. The guard sort of kind of drops down. And what that what does that do? It takes now because you're building relationships, okay? That that trust, that credibility. You're taking it from like a completely cold sort of don't know you to Oh, we have some common ground. Oh, it's some more common ground. Boom. Okay. All right. This is something, folks, that I learned and I practice and I, I do even to this day. Form. Like I said, it stands for Family Occupation Recreation Message. I use this when I'm talking to a complete stranger, and it's a way for me to, to turn a stranger into a casual acquaintance. Um, I remember early on after I graduated from Cal and um, I would go to Starbucks uh, back home over, you know, Silicon Valley or Mountain View area and um, to practice form, talk, talking to a stranger. And I, in the morning, right, I'd walk, I'd get in line and, you know, some Starbucks, I mean, the line's really long, okay? So I'm just kind of standing there, right? And, you know, in Silicon Valley, a bunch of knucklehead techies, right? They always, a lot of them have their name badge, right? Like they have their jail badge on, okay? And uh, right, so I'm standing in line right at Starbucks and I would turn around and uh, I would see Brian's name badge, right? And obviously he has his name, maybe his picture. And back then it was like Cisco or Intel, you know, those companies. And so I see, oh, he works at Cisco. So I would turn around and I would practice form. I'm like, oh, hey, hey, you work at Cisco. And maybe he's like, yeah, I do. And then I start thinking questions about occupation. Oh, what do you do? How long have you been there? How did you get that job? Right, so we start this, hopefully, a conversation, a dialogue,
going back and forth. And maybe during that conversation, he says something about his family or maybe he works a lot or whatever. And I could transition then, hey, right, so when you're not working, you know, uh, long hours at Cisco or you're not traveling, you know, around the world, what do you do for fun? Recreation. Oh, you know, I, my family and I like to do this and that. Oh, he said family. Oh, so do you have kids? Yeah, I have two kids. Oh, you know what? I have two kids too. See, common ground, right? It'll be good. Okay. Which leads to family. Now, the M is the message. That's the kind of the parting goodbye. Because sometimes we find ourselves in this awkward situation where you're meeting someone and you're like, what else do I say? How do I like end this conversation? You know, like gracefully instead of like, uh, Hey, see you later. <laughs> right? Right? So in this case, you know, it could be several things, right? Depending on who you're talking to. Let's say, let's just let's say you're talking to someone in a little while and there's nothing in common, right? There's just like just meeting someone. Maybe a good parting is, hey Oscar, you know what? By the way, are you on LinkedIn? Would you mind if I connect with you on LinkedIn? That's your message. Or maybe Oscar works for whatever company, pick whatever company you work for. You're like, oh my gosh. You know what, Oscar? I'm actually really interested in um, uh, applying for a job at, at your company. Do you have a business card or, or is there a way that I can connect with you and maybe, if it's okay with you, ask you some, some questions about what it's like to work there? See, it's anything to business card or something. That's the message. You save that for the end. Now again, practice this because you don't want to come across like you're machine gunning someone with a bunch of questions. <laughs> it's like a tennis match, right? Hit the ball, and then the other person hits it back, and then you hit it back, and then what happens if this person doesn't hit it back? Game over. Move on. I remember, I would be in that line, right? I'm like, oh hey, you work at Cisco. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh wow, because again, for introverts, that took a lot of guts to do, a lot of courage, right? Go get my Starbucks, man. Walk to the car. I'm like, what the heck am I doing this for? I'm talking to a stranger. But the next day, you know what I do? Get back up. Stand in line again. Do it again and again and again. That's why today, I don't give a rip that any of you said hi to me. I'm going to sleep just as fine. Yeah. But then I'm going to run into the Nasinas of the world. They're super cool, super sweet, super friendly. And it made my trip worthwhile. OK? Does that help you guys? Practice, OK? All right. Let's talk about now after the event. I don't care if you're new, you know, starting off in your career, or if you're an old fart like myself. This is an area that most of us blow it. You don't, you don't believe me? This is what a lot of people do. Collect business cards. <laughs> and then you don't follow up with people. OK? Don't do that. Let me show you some things to do. I'm going to give you, you're welcome to take a picture of this, OK? Because you're going to forget it, OK? <coughs> Unless you write super fast. But I'm going to give you a five-day follow-up plan. Because this is where many of us don't know how to follow up. Like, OK, Oscar, so I met so-and-so. Like, what do I do now? How do I follow up with them? Because I don't want to come across like a like I'm bothering them, okay? I know they're busy. This is how. Now, this is assuming you have a reason to follow up, not just because you're just like, hi, Oscar. Like, don't waste people's time, just hi, Oscar, okay? All right? This is, right? There's an opportunity, or you want to schedule that informational interview, or gosh, you know, you've applied to that company, and like, you need to get the 411 on them, okay? So number one, on Monday, I want you to call them, Assuming you have their number, business number, right, or however, whatever number they gave you, leave them a voicemail and email them too. Hi, I see that. Hey, it's Oscar Garcia. It was nice to meet you at the career uh, day. Um, hey, you know, uh, I mentioned to you uh, that uh, I'd love to schedule a time to uh, uh, ask you some questions about what it's like to work at Facebook. Boom, click. And then the email right afterwards. Send them that email and virtually say the exact same thing, with the exception to say, I would say, let's see, I just left you a voicemail. Ba 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 ba, the rest of it. Why say that? Because 
we don't know how people what people are checking first. Nowadays, actually, most people don't check voicemail. Okay, but at least she knows that I attempted and left her a voicemail, the email. Okay, so that's on Monday. You do that. Tuesday, relax, chill. <laughs> okay, don't do anything. Give people at least 24 hours to react. We're all busy. Life happens. All that type of stuff. Okay. On Wednesday, I want you to call them again. This time, it's going to be more casual. Hi, Nasina, it's Oscar Garcia. I just wanted to follow up on the voicemail that I left you on Monday. We'll love to, you know, see if you have some time for us to, to talk. Here's my phone number, whatever. Click. Okay? Thursday, chill again, okay? On Friday, I want you to go into your sent folder and take that email that you sent on Monday and do like kind of a forward function but you're going to have to, because you have to re-enter their email address in there, okay? And send them a, a, that second email. Hi, Nasina. Um, hey, I know you're probably really busy. Uh, maybe I caught you at a bat. Maybe you're having a busy week at work. But, uh, you know, when you get a chance, here's my phone number, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Short, okay? Let them know that maybe you think they're busy, because, again, we don't know, right? Like, yes, I'm getting ready to fly out to Mexico next Wednesday. I have a lot of stuff that I need to do. In fact, thank God, I didn't, didn't even have this ready the way I wanted to because I was so busy doing it, okay? So give people some grace. Now, let's say next week, the following week, week two comes around, whatever, Monday go, comes and goes, Tuesday comes and goes, Wednesday, they haven't heard, you haven't heard anything. Try one more time, maybe on Thursday or Friday, and at that point, however it is you want to do it. If you want to call them, email them, do both, just one more time. And again, just keep it casual. Hey, sorry. And then after that, folks, back off. That's why you also connect with people. Like in this case, LinkedIn is a great place. Because it's a good, even though Nasina and I, maybe she's super busy or whatever, life happens, who knows, right? But we're staying connected on LinkedIn and we see each other's activity and stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you something, too. Most people are not trying to blow you off and being jerks. They're not. They're just really busy. Because this has happened to me both ways, where I'm like, ah, oh, dude, man. When I finally reach back out to him, dude, I'm, man, I'm sorry, man. I, I've, been, I've been traveling a lot. I have seen your messages. It's like a month later. OK? So yeah, buddy. I, I do it with grace, folks. You know what I mean by grace? Like, be kind. Give them benefit of the doubt. What's your name, buddy? Inseka. Inseka. So, hey, let's say I run into Inseka. Hey, Inseka. Hey, hey, buddy. Great to, great to meet you. Hey, how you been? I've been good. You're a little busy. Little oh. Running around. Oh, my gosh. Right? <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? Um, but I, I kind of figured, you know, I'd reach out and let you a couple of uh, voicemails. I, I, I figured you were really busy, but hey. Um, is this still a good time for us to connect, or, or do you want me to follow up with you maybe in a month or so? Yeah, follow up me in uh, two weeks. Okay, awesome. Now, you see how I asked him when? So therefore, in two weeks when I follow up with him, and if he's blowing me off again for whatever the reason is, it's not on me. He told me two weeks. And see, that's a key thing, and knowing how to be professionally persistent, not a professional pest. That's most of us are, right? Oh, let's see. Hey, dude, how come you haven't followed up? Man? Have <laughs> Seriously, you guys, I know it sounds funny. I have, I've had people that that's how they react. I'm like, dude, I'm, not even my kids do I answer their text right away. I'm going <laughs> to beat it. No, that's very telling, you guys, a person's first impressions. Personality? I don't know about you, but that's not the type of person that I would love to help. Okay. Does that help, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave you with one more thing, and I'm going to open up because we'll have some time for some questions. Okay. I'm going to open up some questions here. Why don't I leave some time for questions, folks? Don't aim to impress others. Knock it off. Inspire them through your imperfections. I'm I'm video recording this. Okay. And I do, um, uh, uh, okay, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't care. You get the gist of what I'm trying to say. 
And if you don't, go listen to someone else then. You're not going to be friends to every single person. But you can be nice to every single person. See the difference? We can only control what we can control. There's my contact information. You can follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. There's my phone number. You can even text me on that number. Okay? My email address. If you're an introvert like myself and you want to go check me out on the website before you reach out to me, do it. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, send me an invitation to connect on LinkedIn. Okay? Let me open it up to some questions. Anyway, any questions? Yes, buddy. Um, so Let me just get some water here. Yeah, one of the main problems I kind of run into is like when you go to a networking event and you might have like a news analyst or the people you want to contact and get in contact with, it's like 15 people mm -hmm. And it's like now you're like, uh, how do I get in and ask a question or what? So what do you do in those situations? Yeah, uh, I love this. Great question. So what do you do if you're in a situation where, you know, a bunch of people around the speakers or speaker, right? So a couple of ways you can go about it. You can either A, be assertive and just interrupt and say, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Hey, Oscar, you know what? Um, I know you're really busy here, but do you have a business card? I'll follow up with you later. That's one. Other thing that you can do is, remember what I told you about social media, in this case, like LinkedIn, get their name and um, um, uh, company that they work for, look them up on LinkedIn, send them a personalized invitation. Don't just send the generic, you know, automatic one, but personalize it, okay? And in that, say, Oscar, I heard you speak. You were surrounded with a lot of people, didn't want to interrupt, would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. That's how you would start, okay? Great question, buddy. Yes, and then I'll come over here. Yeah, that's a good question. Interf informational interviews, great way to gather intelligence, you know, right? It could be uh, about the company, the person's career journey, um, you know, just in general, just about the person, right? Um, what I encourage you to do with, uh, it's in terms of the structure of the informational interview is, again, do your homework ahead of time on that person and the company. Have some... Um, questions already written and I would encourage you the questions that you break it up into questions that are really easy that you might even already know the answer but it's a good warm-up for you okay just like anything like I don't care if you're like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger when you go to work out you're not just gonna all, all of a sudden stack it up and be like, ah, you're probably gonna hurt yourself you do warm-up exercises right same thing with those information interviews you have these warm-up questions that then lead you to maybe something more in depth, okay? Next <clears throat> is, is that in the informational interview, somewhere ask the person, is there anything I can do for you, Oscar? Why? First of all, you're probably thinking like, but Oscar, like what can I offer a professional? Like seriously, like where I'm at. That's not the point, you guys, you're missing it. The point is that you even have the audacity to think about them. I help over 10,000 people, less than, Two handfuls have ever asked me if they can help me. And you know what? One, that person stands out because their attitude, they're givers. All the other people, I'm not saying that I don't, but they don't think of it. That's why you do that, because it's a nice little thing to stand out. See, you guys, the very, go, go on to my LinkedIn profile under articles. The very first article that I wrote is titled, I am a minority. And it's a play on the word minority. Normally, we have negative connotations of being minority, right? Because we're first gen, low income, blah, blah, blah. You know what? No. Anyone that's ever accomplished anything of significance is a minority. How many people have won the gold medal? A lot? This, there's only one winner, gold medal. So what I'm getting at to your question about asking it is very few people, the majority, are selfish. They don't ask, can they help? Only the minority you have the audacity to say, Oscar, is there anything I can do for you? And so when you act like a minority, you win. 
you had a question. Yes. Great question, too. It's how you say it. It's how you say it. It really is. OK? Guys, when I come up with a different analogy, I'll use a different one, OK? But it's like dating. <laughs> OK? It's how you go up to the person and like, you compliment them, right? So in your case, is, is that come up right up front. Hey, John, you know what? Uh, thank you very much for your time. I just want to let you know that uh, I wanted to come prepared. And I did some homework, you know, I, I looked you up on LinkedIn. I am super, remember the compliment? I'm super impressed by your career journey. Like, how can anyone really argue against that and think you're creepy? <laughs> you see, it's how you say it. Now, you might have, because, hey, man, you know, there are weirdos all over, okay? You might have one or two people be like, you looked at me, move on. Someone acts like that, because that's not being weird. Again, it's all how you Say it. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, but. Uh, so if you're trying, let's say you are trying to get your foot in the door, let's say you want to get that right. And you do an informational interview, how do you transition from like trying to network and trying to be a friend, like you were saying? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, if you are actively in the hunt for an opportunity at whatever company, and you're doing information, always like, how do you come across where you're, you know, being genuine, right? That, that you're, for your, your motives. Be upfront and state your motives upfront. Hey, Oscar, you know what? I see that you work at Google. Uh, I'm really interested in applying a position, or I just applied for a position. Would like to um, see if maybe I can grab five, 10 minutes of your time. So be upfront. That way, People know why versus, again, it comes how you, you, you say it, right? If you just, you know, approach me and like, hey, I just want to, you know, I'm kind of curious what it's like to, you know, work at Google, this and that. And then like towards the end, and I'm like, yeah, I'm applying. I'm like, how come you didn't tell me that? Maybe I, maybe I could have given you a different answers to guide you. But now I came across like, dude, like, let's be up front. That's what I would do. Let's be up front. I think there was another, was there another question? Staff, any questions from you guys? Or Jesse, big man on campus over there. Ah, yeah, speaking. <coughs> um, guys, one, in terms of uh, speaking, is it really is practice, practice, practice. OK, we're going to goof up. I have goofed up many times. I have done that machine gun approach, like I told you. And then I go to the car, I'm like, oh, I feel like a schmuck, right? I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad, because I don't want to make that person feel that way. So just, that's why I tell you, we're all imperfect, right? Just keep trying it. The other thing, though, is, is that observe other people. I, 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 I observe a lot. I observe other people that I admire their style, you know, that, how they interact you know, and, and engage in, and so forth. I'm like, oh, what do they like? What, what do I like about their style? How they, you know, approach, you know, you know, like the way they're dressed and this and that, you know, and how oh, okay. And I learn from, from that uh, as well. The other thing too, you guys, is, is that whether it's books or audiobooks, whatever. I do audiobooks now because I fall asleep doing reading traditional, okay? <laughs> I do, okay? But I, uh, I, I, I listen to a lot of books on self-help personal growth and really build my, my self-image. I really have. Seriously, I mean, hey, when I came to campus, and some of you can relate to this, okay? I, when I came to Berkeley, freshman year, I walked into Wheeler Hall, Ecom 101. I don't know how it is today, but back then, 800 students. I was up in the nosebleed section, right? Only one out of 10 in my family to go to college. Sitting up there, professor walks up, taps on the podium, goes through the syllabus really quickly, starts lecturing, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not in Kansas anymore. I'm like, she will never know who I am. And all I saw was 29,999 
brains with two legs, and I wasn't one of those. But I kept doing it, kept doing it, and building that self-image. And eventually, that's why I tell you, like, I don't give a rip if you guys say hi to me or not. I don't. That's what some of the things I do. What else, guys? We still have 10 minutes here. <laughs> Is it? Was this helpful? OK. You guys, if you're not on LinkedIn, like, get on LinkedIn, OK? Seriously, OK? Also, if you do not have the LinkedIn mobile app right now on your phone, before you go up to the networking event, download it. Because this is what I want you to do. Well, I'm using my phone. But when you go to the app, okay, and you tap on the network, on the bottom right, there'll be a little circle that says, uh, I think it says find nearby. Tap on that, and the Bluetooth then starts working. And anyone that's in the surrounding area here starts showing up as potential contacts. And so now you're, we're all in this event, and it's so easy to just connect because we're all here and network, to be able to network that way. And then that way you can follow up with people. Because that's the way I do it too. Like I'll go in an event and like I get busy, you know, talking to you know, Brian and Nasina, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I missed talking to Jesse over here. But bam, I connected with him. Now I can follow up with him on Monday next week. Yeah, but. Um, so when it comes to networking, you say that you're always on brand, like where you go to a uh, teacher's parent teacher conference here, uh, sports game, or you turn it on and you have to go to a particular network event? Uh, I'm always Oscar Garcia. Uh -huh. That's who I am. Uh -huh. that's, that's why I mentioned earlier that networking is being a friend. So I'm always Oscar Garcia looking to be your friend. That way I don't have to be like, Oh my gosh, Oscar Garcia, founder, CEO. I don't give a rip about titles. It's Oscar Garcia, dude. And see, that's the thing, you guys. People will fall in love with you for who you are as a person, not for what company you work for. They'll use you for what company you work for or your titles. See, the minute I stopped working at the chamber as a chamber CEO, all of a sudden that title went away and people were like, ah, whatever. I don't need those kind of friends. Be real. Okay. Any other questions? Was this helpful? Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll stick around for the networking event, okay? Thank you. Thank you.